I cut it off too early, man. I cut it off too early. Yeah. 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 What is good? What is good? What is good? Welcome to Run It Back Philly. Sixers post game live. Sixers sickos in the house. We've been here all season, every single game. Watching along on playback.tv slash running back Philly and do a post game lives right here. Even when it's the Detroit Pistons, we're still here, especially with the big fella play. Anytime we get to watch Joel Embiid play basketball, we watch. Players like him don't come around too often. Maybe ever. And ladies and gentlemen, the guy came back from knee surgery and started cooking like nothing ever happened. I mean, he started cooking like a chef that was laid off for two months. And he said, hey, we need you again. Are you good to go? It's a busy Friday night. Jumped right back in the kitchen and started whipping the pots and pans. Look at the flick of the wrist. Unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. This is brought to you by BetUS. Of course, the number one online sports book. And they're giving you 125% deposit bonus right now in your first three deposits. And you could have taken Joel Embiid combined stats tonight on BetUS. They got prop bets like this all the time. A lot of fun. His his combined points, rebounds, and assists was set at 45-plus tonight on BetUS. And he had 37, 11, 8. What's that? 48, 56? BetUS, they don't, they don't even understand yet. They said he's coming back from injury. We don't know yet. We're going to put his points, rebound, assists at 45. They didn't even, they don't, you got to take advantage of the fact that Bet US doesn't even know yet that this guy's not human. 45 on a, after a, a knee surgery and a, his combined stats were 56. Unbelievable. Shout out to Bet US. Thank you for sponsoring the channel. Use the link in my description. Use the code JOIN125 to get 125% deposit bonus on your first three deposits. Let's get down to business. Mr. Rudy, what's going on, my guy? Let me get back to here. Here we go. Uh, Mr. Rudy, $5 super chat. Thank you, DJ. We cooking, but damn, did you see what happened to Giannis? I don't care. We're talking about the Sixers. We're talking about the Sixers winning and Joel Bede having 37, 11, and 8. And you're going to come in here talking about Giannis and Tetacuntpo. I'm just kidding, Mr. Rudy. Yeah, Giannis had a uh, calf strain. Okay. I mean, it looked bad when it first happened. Everybody thought non-contact, it's an ACL or something. He was just holding his calf and he fell over and he held his calf and then he walked to the locker room and, I don't know, calf strain. Uh, Anyway... Joel Embiid dominated tonight. That's what we need to talk about, okay? And also, Tobias Harris had a little audition for his future squad. His his former squad, but his future squad. The only team that offered anything for Tobias Harris in a trade in the last five years, the Detroit Pistons. And Tobias said, you know what? I sat out a couple games with my sore knee. This is probably the only team that's going to offer me a contract this summer. This is probably the only team that's going to overpay me this summer. This team offered a couple of solid players to take on that contract. And Daryl Morey said, no, 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 no. We want that 40 million expiring. You guys aren't getting that 40 million expiring. We want that 40 million expiring. 
because I want Paul George. That's what Daryl Morey said. I didn't say it. So Tobias said, you know what? I'm going to come back tonight, and I'm going to put up some solid stats to show the Detroit Pistons that I still got it, and they should overpay me. That's what happened. Uh, the funny thing about this is, is that the seven, the game was close. Kind of the whole game. Detroit actually made a run in the third quarter, and it was a one-point game. Keep that in mind now. Tobias had 10 points at halftime. He had one point in the third quarter. Detroit was making a run. With four minutes left in the third, Nick Nurse put him on the bench after he got bodied by a guy named Me Too. I thought that was a knockoff Amazon website. Turns out it's an NBA player. He was just waived by the Memphis Grizzlies 48 hours ago. He bodied Tobias Harris in the paint, finished the layup, and Nick Nurse immediately put him on the bench and put Ricky Council back in the game. Sixers make a run. Sixers continue to make a run. Daryl Morey does, still doesn't put Tobias back in the game to start the fourth. Three, four minutes into the fourth, Sixers are extending the lead. Now it's 12, 13, 14. Buddy Heald's hitting threes. Kelly Oubre's attacking the paint. Still doesn't put Tobias back in the game. Sixers up 19 points. Seems like all the starters are about to go out. Five minutes left. Brings Tobias Harris back in the game. So, so, so we can do so we can do a little bit of a little bit of stat padding at the very end of the game. You see, this is what I get every day with the people on Instagram in the comments section or wherever in the comments section saying, What are you talking about? He wasn't part of the win. He had 17, 12, and, and 6. What did he have? What did he have? He had he had 15, 12, and 4. That was a pretty good guess. But really, he had 11. And really, he was getting his ass kicked in the third quarter and got benched for it and came back in after the game was over, got a couple more buckets. I do like the 12 rebounds from Tobias Harris. I think it's very interesting. When he was on the floor with Kelly Oubre, he was deferring to him again. Which is fine. I like I like that. I like the fact that Tobias Harris is not cocky and doesn't take shots away from people. He says, you know what? They overpaid me. I'm the third option. I'm going to get down here under the rim and try to get some boards. And that's what he did. And really, I don't know what kind of conversations they're having leading up to the playoffs. But like 28, this, this is this game right here. This game right here from Tobias Harris is what I want to see happen in the playoffs. This game right here. Be physical. Use your size under the rim. Fight for some damn rebounds. Don't take shots away from anybody on the offensive end. I'd rather have a Kelly Oubre aggressive drive to the rim than you backing somebody down for 21 seconds. You start to get beat up in the third quarter. You start to look like a little bit of a fraud in the paint. Nick Nurse puts you on the bench. The team makes a run without you, and he doesn't put you back in until we put him away. 28 minutes, 15 points, 12 rebounds, 4 assists. Not a lot of boneheaded plays. Not a lot of turnovers or or airballed layups or missed dunks or anything like that. This is solid Tobias Harris game. From Tobias Harris, from Nick Nurse, from the Sixers making a run when he went to the bench, from Nick Nurse not forcing it and putting him back in. He used Tobias Harris in this game pretty much like a fifth or sixth option, and it worked perfectly. And that's how he should use them in the playoffs. And I mean that. And I mean that. That's how he should use them in the playoffs. If you have to use them. I'll take the 12 rebounds. Just give me 15 and 12 and 28 minutes. I don't care how much money you were paid. 
Just give me 15 and 12 and 28 minutes and get the hell out of the way. And it's all good. So I was happy about that. Now, Joe Ellen Bede off a knee surgery. What fourth game back? Just absolutely unbelievable that he came back and started playing at an MVP level within a couple of games. And that's basically what we were saying. Once we saw that the knee was healthy in the first game that he came back, we were saying, well, he just needs his conditioning now. And once he gets his conditioning back, it's over for the league again. We're right back to where we were. We're right back to 28 and 8 with this guy on the floor. We're right back to an 8 and 1 start. We're right back to the highest net rating in the NBA. Top two defense, top five offense, maybe the other way around. We're right back to what was happening in the beginning of the season once he gets that conditioning. And that's what you're starting to see right now. It helps when you're playing, you know, uh, Jalen Duran and uh, the center that the Warriors drafted that was a bust, James Wiseman. It helps. Sure, it helps. Joel could have scored 70 in this game if he really wanted to. He wanted to get his teammates involved a little bit more, get his assist numbers up, got his got his Jokic on a little bit, got his Joel Magic Johnson on a little bit. And he was going for, maybe he was going for a 40-point triple-double there. Maybe he stayed in the end of the game because he wanted those three more assists. I did notice he came back into the game with five minutes left. I thought Nurse was going to keep him out. The Sixers were up 19. There was no real reason for him to come back in. But there's two things it could have been. It could have been Joel saying, listen, I almost have a 40-point triple-double. Let me go back in. I want that. And Which, if you get hurt chasing a stat, that would be pretty damn annoying, right? But I like the, I just like the approach that Nick Nurse takes that it's like, you can't prevent injury. You really just can't prevent injury. If he's going to get hurt, he's going to get hurt. And I think what they were doing was, you tell me what you think, but I think they were saying we need to get him to the point where he's playing an entire game, right? Because you get to the playoffs, you get some of these close games, it's not going to be uh, sit in the fourth quarter, you know? Midway through the season, beginning of the season, most of the season, fine. Sit in the fourth quarter every game that we're up by 20. That's whatever. But you're getting closer to the playoffs, and you're trying to get your conditioning back after knee surgery. Yeah, I think they were like, we need to start conditioning him to play full, full lengths of games because the only games we've seen him after the surgery, he's pretty gassed in the fourth. So I think that's why he stayed out there to get more of that full game conditioning and, uh, you know, run until the clock hits zero. And it's just what you have to do. I know some people were like, he shouldn't be out there. He shouldn't be out there. It's what you have to do. If he's going to get hurt, he's going to get hurt. You just got to play. If he's healthy, you got to play him. It is what it is. So, uh, and he, and he didn't look gassed in the fourth. He didn't look like he was burnt out. Like, some of some of those first two games that he played after knee surgery, he really looked like he was dogged halfway through the third into the fourth. Didn't really have anything left. Uh, he he looked like he had something left in in this game. So uh, I like the fact that they did that. Thirty six minutes for Joel Embiid. Thirty six minutes. Thirty seven points, eleven rebounds, eight assists. Thirty seven points. In 36 minutes, the highest point per minute scorer in NBA history. It's just absolutely ridiculous. It's not normal at all. The rate that he scores points has never been seen before. And it's because his size combined with his ball skill and the jump shot. The jump shot is everything. No man that size has ever had a jump shot this pure, this smooth, this consistent, it gets to the point where it's totally unstoppable. And when, when a 7'2", 280-pound center who can body you in the paint, who can drop step you, who can move you the hell out of his way if he really wants to, can just Kevin Durant you from the top of the key, can just literally dribble you to sleep and pull up from the elbow, and it's butter, that equals him being the highest point-per-minute scorer in the NBA. He gets on a roll, and he's just completely... There's nothing you can do. 
hit four threes in this game. Chucked up a couple of them late. His three-point percentage was really good until I think the last two attempts. Uh, One of them, he pops out of a screen on an inbound play. What center you know is getting a screen from Buddy Heald and popping out into the corner to shoot a three off of an inbound? (laughs) Absolutely ridiculous. Uh, The scare that we had, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the scare that we had from Joel Embiid today. In the third quarter, Nicholas Batum drops a little lob pass over the top like he normally does. They do that high-low action, and Batum's usually on the money with it, trying to keep it far enough away from the defense to drop it in there. Threw this one a little too far. Now, Joel Embiid, I would like to be smart enough and say I'm just going to run out of bounds instead of trying to stop my momentum because I weigh 300 pounds and my knees don't like me. I'm just going to run out of bounds. Instead, him being the 6'4 shooting guard that he thinks he is in his mind, plants both feet on the baseline to try to stay in bounds, jams both of his knees, falls over. He's holding his knee. He's limping back to the bench. And we're all holding our breath like, dear God, please just let that be. I don't know what that is. I think anytime he does that, it's painful. Uh, But definitely holding his knee. He was holding his right knee. No, not his left knee. So he wasn't holding the surgically repaired knee, even though on the replay, it looked bad on both of them. Holding his knee limps back to the bench. Uh, You know, but that's just. He's the size that he is, and he plays the game the style that he plays it. You're That's why I feel like Nick Nurse and everybody else is like, we're just going to play him because you're risking injury anytime he's out there. And you, you can't, what, what do you do? Just never play because you might get hurt. You got to just play. But that play uh, had us all holding our breath. We didn't, we didn't like that. Okay. We did not like that. Joel had some very nice assists in the first half of this game. Some backdoor cuts to Kelly Oubre. The best cutting wingman Joel Embiid has had on the roster in his career. Uh, he, he They were running that, you know, elbow Nicole Jokic style game. And he's just hitting people backdoor, left-handed pass, right-handed pass. Hit one that was a jump shot where he double tapped square or he pushed the pass button while he was in the air. You know what I mean? On 2K, that shit flies into the crowd every single time. I don't know why that's in the game. But Joel B completes that pass. Jump shot, midair pass. No look, by the way. Uh, What else happened with Joel? Oh, the no look floater in the third quarter. Bro, this guy leans in, j- drives into the defense, leans in, creates contact, I don't know if you say if you say it's a foul. Obviously, he was trying to draw a foul. I don't hate the officials not calling that because it's annoying when NBA players are just looking for a foul and not really trying to score. But he draws the contact, throws the ball behind his head from the foul line, and it goes in. That would have been the craziest and one I've ever seen if they would have called the foul. They didn't call the foul. But, I mean, he has everything. Now he has no-look floaters? <laughs> <laughs> now, if he doesn't get the call from officials, he has no look floaters now, bro. He can just behind his head from the foul line. What can't the guy do, man? What can he do, man? Uh, we had a Joel Embiid B ball Paul lineup at the end of the third quarter. Um, and Joel had an accidental alley oop to uh, Paul Reed. He had an air ball to floater, and Paul Reed put it back in. That was nice. But that that B ball Paul Joel and B lineup, I think that's interesting. It's the second time Nick Nurse has done that now since Joel came back from injury, and I think it's Nurse trying it out and Nurse saying, you know, if this works, and we're in a playoff game where we're getting out rebounded by a thousand, like probably will happen against the D- Boston Celtics then maybe you do that. Maybe you go and bead B-ball Paul uh, to try to shore up the rebounds a little bit more, shore up the paint defense a little bit more. Uh, So you got that Paul Reed, Joel Embiid lineup in the third, and that is exactly when the Philadelphia 76ers made the run they made to put the Detroit Pistons away. Uh, What else I got on Embiid, man? 
He blocked Jalen Duran about four times. I respect Jalen Duran. I respect the confidence. But these guys that attack Joel Embiid, um, you know, you, you're just going to have to figure out something else because clearly it ain't going to work. He blocked him three, four times. I don't know. Um, I think that's all I have on Joel. Amazing game once again. He's back in MVP form, and there's no reason for anybody to think that the Sixers can't make a run at an NBA championship because all we needed is Joel Embiid. It's crazy. 450 people up in here after a Sixers dub. Go ahead, do me a favor one time. Close out the chat. Hit the like button one time. Give me 450 likes. That's how we're going to push this stream out and get a lot more viewers and we're gonna push we're gonna push a thousand live viewers after a pistons game bro that's what we're gonna do okay let's get the stats up on the screen let's get it let's get over to the to this we got a super chat here from uh xander van elsis thank you for the support thank you for the super chat nurse for mvp he looks like he's finally over tobias's shit playoff mode activated let's go sickos we look scary when healthy oh yeah Oh, yeah, we look scary when healthy. And this is, you know, I was saying during the whole Joel Embiid injury. At first, I thought he wasn't coming back. I thought he was done for the season. I thought the Sixers were lying to us. But I, I these people that were saying he shouldn't come back because the Sixers look terrible without him. They're so bad. They fell so far. He just shouldn't even come back. It doesn't make any sense. They were bad because he w wasn't there. Because he's clearly the most valuable player every single season. And the 97.5 or, or WIP, I forget who tweeted it. Joel Embiid's back from injury, but do you feel like the Sixers have fallen too far to have a chance? Bro, he, if they're in the playoffs with a healthy Joel, they have a chance. Anybody that's watched the season knows that. Those are hockey fans and, and, and Eagles fans, so they don't actually know what they're talking about. That's why they posted that. It is what it is. Uh, nurse for MVP. He looks like he's finally over Tobias' shit. Um, yeah, and again, that, again, the people that you know don't really watch but just kind of watch the stats, I, I, I'm not saying everybody has to be a Sixers sicko. I'm not saying everybody has to watch every game. But if you know you don't watch every game, if you know you don't actually watch what happened in the third quarter and where they made the run to win the game, like only real Sixers fans know that type of stuff. Only only those of us that watch every game, the whole game, you can say, when did they make the run to put Detroit away? And I could say, the end of the third quarter. Especially when they ran the Embiid-Paul Reed lineup. Like, that's some real Sixers sicko shit. If you, if you know you don't watch it like that, I just don't understand why they constantly come at me and jump into conversations when they know they don't know what they're talking about. So they'll see this video and they'll say, how are you sitting up here slandering Tobias Harris when he gave you 15, 12, and 4 on good efficiency? Because I was watching the game. He got his ass kicked in the third quarter. He got bodied by a guy named Timu, knock off Amazon website. And Nurse put him on the bench, and that's when the Sixers made the run to win the damn game, and he didn't put him back in the game until it was over so he could stat pad a little bit. I'm just saying. I don't try to be a hater every every episode. It's just, you know, but what I'm saying is, and I think what Xander is saying here, is that I feel like this game, Tobias Harris wasn't forced in our faces. Pause. I was going to say force down our throats. Pause. No diddy. I don't know a, an expression to use that's not... Um, I just feel like Tobias Harris wasn't forced as a, as a main option in this game. Nurse just used him for what he was good for in this game. Give me those rebounds. Give me 10 or 15 points. Okay, now you're going to start getting bodied in the lane and it's a one-point game. I don't need you anymore. Thank you for your service. Have a good day. Like, that's just how I feel, and I think I think a lot, most people feel that way. You know what I'm saying? Um, why is that an expression, forced it down our throats? That's terrible. And why is it the first thing I think? 
Anyway, what else we got to talk about, man? Um, Kelly Oubre attacking, attacking, attacking. Somebody tried to dunk on him. Blocked a poster attempt. And that's really when, when Kelly started to get hot, started to go off a little bit in that third quarter. Uh, the end of the third quarter, actually. That run right there, now that I think about it, was mostly Kelly Oubre. Just attacking. Uh, he had like five or seven straight points at the end of that third when, uh, what's his name, tried to dunk on him. And he blocked the poster attempt, gave him the little cancel celebration, looked at him, it confused. Like, dude, I'm Tsunami Poppy, bro. I'm your girlfriend's favorite NBA player. I do this. Why would you try to dunk on me? <laughs> You can't body me, bro. I just fell down the mountain on a mountain bike two months ago. Or got hit by a car or something like that. But uh, the block was great. And that that I feel like that kind of sparked him a little bit. You know, that kind of sent him on a little bit of a, a tangent of uh, just attacking the rim. Uh, there was a play that, I, that stood out to me where Joel gave Kelly the ball. Joel was calling for the ball back. Kelly attacked the rim instead. I don't think he scored on that possession, but I just thought it was funny because that's just so Kelly Oubre. <laughs> he does not. Bro, here you go, Peter. Greatest basketball player I've ever seen. That's all there is to it. I don't give a f what anybody says. Are you talking about Kelly Oubre? <laughs> I don't know if you're talking about Kelly Oubre or Joel Embiid, uh, but Kelly Oubre does not care what anybody thinks. He's like, I'm going to get mine. And uh, that was a, a play that was funny because it was just very Kelly Oubre to take the ball. Joel's calling for it back, and he just goes to the rim anyway. Um, shout out to Kelly, man. He's gonna be so he's gonna be so big time in the playoffs. And Nick Nurse knows that. Nick Nurse knows that that's the third guy. That's the perfect position between Embiid and Maxi. Is that slashing, relentless, attacking, athletic uh, wing? who can finish at the rim, who can get to a mid-range shot. His his three hasn't been terrible lately, even though he's one for five in this game. He was only six for 16 from the field. Uh, but the level of confidence from Kelly Oubre every night is just out of this world. And if we all had the confidence of Kelly Oubre, man, we would all be successful in life. Just keep that in mind. Anytime, anytime you're, you know... Anytime you're not where you want to be, man, just tell yourself, be just be like, be more like Kelly Oubre, man. He doesn't care if Yao Ming and Shaquille O'Neal both in their prime are standing in front of the rim. He's trying to get through that. We all need a little more Kelly Oubre in us. Pause. Listen, Greg, thank you for the super chat, man. Um, I appreciate that, Greg. I don't know if you were trying to say, uh, if you were trying to say a comment there, you just super chatted. You didn't actually say anything. So if you post something in the chat, uh, I'll be watching the chat and I'll, and I'll try to read that for you. De'Anthony Melton was back. Um, De'Anthony Melton, he looks healthy. And he had a couple of steals in that run. That 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 I'm pretty sure part of that run where we really put them away. Uh, De'Anthony Melton had like two or three back-to-back -back steals right there. Uh, big time. He couldn't make a shot as far as a three-point attempt or some of his little mid-ranges. De'Anthony Melton was two for nine. He was one for five from the field, and you expect that from somebody that hasn't played the game in a couple of months, right? But nice to have him back. Nice to have another uh, guard who can play defense but but also is a guy that can kind of create something when the offense is getting stagnant. You know what I mean? I said live on the playback stream, um, I remember when we were saying DeAnthony Melton was the only player off of the bench that can create something. I remember when Daryl Morey traded for him, and we were like, finally, we have a combo guard off the bench who can just do all the little things, who can dribble, pass, and shoot, who can play basketball, you know? Shout out to you, Greg. Glad, glad I caught that comment after your super chat. Straight from South Philly, would you start campaign or Lowry in the playoffs? I think Nurse is going to start Lowry, and I think I would start Lowry uh, anyway. I really like, I really like the combination of Kyle Lowry and Tyrese Maxey because Lowry's not a shoot first player. Lowry's not an attack first player. He's not a score first player. 
He's really a setup man. And, you know, I didn't know Lowry had this much left in the tank after when he was on the buyout market. I was saying we should have traded for Malcolm Brogdon, somebody like that. I thought Brogdon would have been a perfect kind of setup man. If you're going to put a point guard on the floor with Tyrese Maxey, you know, you really want it to be just a facilitating setup man. And then Maxey can run free, coming around screens, getting downhill, and just attack, 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 uh, like he did against the Spurs and drop 52 points. You don't want to put like a shoot first, score first type of point guard on the floor, I think, with him to start the game. I do like Cameron Payne, Tyrese Maxey lineups because they both attack. But I like Kyle Lowry better starting next to him. And then you can you can use Cameron Payne and Kyle Lowry both based on how they're playing that game. You know, you if Cam Payne is ice cold and can't buy a bucket, you don't bring him back in. If Lowry is the same way, maybe don't bring him back in. I don't know. Maybe Nurse will bring him back in in the fourth anyway because he loves him. But if they both stink it up, guess what? You could put NASCAR in the game. NASCAR! Jeff Doughton Jr. coming around turn three. Jeff Doughton Jr., a.k.a. Ricky Bobby. We call him NASCAR in the playback chat because he has just a straight-up NASCAR name, Jeff Doughton Jr. Um, He was solid in this game too, man. I liked what Jeff Doughton Jr. did in this game. Uh, Made some very nice plays. Attacked the rim, had a couple of assists, a couple of nice assists. But I think the thing that I really love about Jeff Doughton Jr. He had eight points and six assists. I think the really thing, the thing that I really love about Jeff Doughton Jr. is his control, his patience. He really plays the game like a veteran point guard. He really slows the game down, brings order. And without Lowry tonight, I think uh, Doughton Jr. was that was that point guard really that half court point guard who was kind of slowing the game down and bringing order. And he played 21 minutes in the game. And shout out to Nick Nurse for knowing that, you know, because he coached him before. And Nurse was like, hey, he was probably like, hey, Doughton's in the G League, bro. Uh, he's solid. I would like him on my roster. I can use him in certain situations. Trust me, he's cool. You know, Nick Nurse got Jeff Doughton signed. Like when you invite a friend over to a party who nobody knows, you're like, no, no, no. Trust me. You know, let him in. He's chill. He's mad cool, bro. You guys are going to like him. I think that's how Nick Nurse got Jeff Doughton Jr. We all didn't have any idea. They signed him and started to use him like three days later. And we were like, how the hell did he sign this guy out of the G League and he's on the floor already? That's why Nick Nurse is a championship coach and I'm just a guy in my attic talking in a microphone on YouTube. Uh, Scott Sotan. Thanks for the super chat. Sicko leader. Three things I really like lately. Reed is a bench power forward. Melton back shot will come and I do like Harris off the bench behind K9. Do we really think that's going to happen though? You know what I mean? And I, again, I think if you start to bias tonight is what is how I think the rotation should go with Tobias Harris. He's not a forceful player. He's not a guy that's going to put the team on the, on his back in, in a, in a certain Lot in a certain segment of a game like Kelly Oubre did tonight at the end of that third quarter. He's kind of just a guy. We know that. And I think tonight is how you should use him. Use him for what he's good for. And when a when a lineup that doesn't involve him is is extending the game and putting it away, leave him on the bench. And then bring him back in a little bit later so you can stat pad a little bit. So he can get his numbers up a little bit. So that little sign and trade maybe in the offseason looks a little better. Fine with me. Finishing a game, Scott. Yeah, I, that's definitely still a thing that's out there that, you know, we've seen it a couple times this season where he wasn't playing great. Uh, a certain lineup was playing a lot better and they brought him in in the final minutes anyway. I think there's definitely lineups that are more efficient than some of those Tobias Harris lineups like a Cameron Payne, Kelly Oubre, Maxi and B, Lowry, uh, I don't know. We'll just see, man. We'll we'll see. I I, I think there's politics at play, but I, I have to hope that the Sixers are just going to give Nick Nurse the freedom to, I'm going to put the best lineups out there that I think are going to win this game. If Tobias Harris is cooking and has 27 points going into the fourth quarter, then by all means. Uh, but I thought I, I really liked... Uh, what Nick Nurse did in with the lineups in this game. 
I really liked what he did with the lineups in this game. And I think the last thing I want to say is, is Buddy Heal back. Buddy Heal cooking a little bit in this game. Buddy Heal, you know, it's amazing what playing the Detroit Pistons will do for you, you know? Confidence is down. You're not feeling too good about yourself. You feel like you can't make a shot. You know what I mean? Your girlfriend just broke up with you. You really want to get out there and start talking to some new new prospects, but you don't have any confidence. You just got to go play the Detroit Pistons, man. That'll bring you back on your feet. I was going to make a crazy analogy. Uh, No, I'm not going to do that. All right, I'll say it real quick. Playing the Detroit Pistons is like going to spring break after your girl broke up with you, you know? Three days at spring break, you got your confidence back. That's all he needed. All he needed was a, a game against the Detroit Pistons, and boom, he's back in action. Um, You know, getting getting some open ones, like he's been getting open ones, but he's been hesitating lately in games. He wasn't hesitating at all in this game. And playing off of Joel, getting wide open shots off of the Joel Embiid gravity, a play that stands out to me is just simple. Joel Embiid on the elbow, gets a double team, kicks it to Batum, Batum swings it to uh, Buddy in the corner, wide open. And when Buddy's the confident Buddy, that wide open three is automatic. And that's a hockey assist for Joel Embiid. You know what I'm saying? He's he's open there in the corner because Joel got doubled at the uh, at the elbow. Um, so, yeah, it was nice to see Buddy Heald get his shot back and get his confidence back again playing the Detroit Pistons. It's amazing what playing the Detroit Pistons can do for your confidence. He had 18 and six rebounds, six for 12 from the floor, five for nine from three. We'll see if we'll see if Buddy, uh, you know, continues to play that way, continues to get his confidence back, and continues to uh, to ramp it up. Let's check the standings, man. Um, I know you guys are talking about the Pacers one. Uh, the Pacers need to lose two. I know I made a video today trying to figure it out and I didn't do the proper research to get the exact numbers. And, you know, there was a, a couple of well actuallys in the comments that were pretty upset with the fact that I pressed record and didn't exactly know what I was talking about. <laughs> but the, the engagement was so high on that video because I had so many people in the comments correcting me and calling me an idiot that the views were going off because of the engagement. So I just let it, I was, I thought about deleting it at first when I was like, Oh shit. I said, the Pacers only have two games left. They actually have three games left. We actually can catch them for the sixth seed. But I said, we couldn't because they only had two left. The people were roasting me in the comments. I was good thinking about deleting it, but the views were going crazy because of the engagement, because I said something wrong. So you can just say things intentionally wrong now on, on the internet and the algorithm rewards you for it. So there's that. But anyway, uh, back to what we were talking about. Okay, here we go. So after Indiana beat Toronto, which, you know, Toronto Raptors are frauds. Uh, they were up at halftime. Freaking Freedom Liberty was going nuts. He had 16 points at halftime. Liberty Bibbity. Thought they could hold him off, but they didn't. Um, and the Pacers win, so they are 46 and 34. They are still a game ahead of us for the sixth seat. However, the Orlando Magic lost. The Orlando Magic are now tied with the Cleveland Cavaliers one and a half games ahead of us for that sixth seed. And what a lot of you pointed out to me today, which I agree with, is that the Orlando Magic have a tough remaining schedule. The Milwaukee Bucks, it's, that should be tough us and the Milwaukee Bucks again that should be tough the Orlando Magic have been playing uh great basketball this season I think they're too young and inexperienced to probably pull anything off in the playoffs but they're in that seed because of their own play so I'm not saying the Orlando Magic are definitely going to lose those games but if the Bucks just stop being frauds for three games at the end of this season then maybe Orlando loses all three of those and they fall into the play-in tournament and the Sixers sneak into the sixth seed that way. I don't have any fear that the Sixers are going to lose any of these games at the end of this season. I, let, me, let me look at it again just to be double, double sure. 
Uh, Orlando again in Brooklyn. Okay. No, we don't play until Friday against Orlando. That's probably going to be a big one. That makes it very interesting, actually. And I like this. I like this from a basketball fan standpoint. There's there's a lot of end of seasons where the rest of the games don't matter, right? Where you already clinched the playoffs. None of these games matter. We're resting players. The last eight games of the season are just a freaking snooze fest. We actually might get a game on Friday between the Sixers and the Orlando Magic that is very, very important to us trying to get out of the play-in tournament if Orlando loses to the Bucs tomorrow. This is what I should have said in this video that I made today. (laughs) So there's that. Uh, Cleveland is 46-33, and and we'll look at their remaining schedule. They have Memphis, the Pacers, who are definitely not trying to lose, and the Hornets. Again, I, I don't... I don't think I see Cleveland losing to Memphis or Charlotte. So realistically, the 76ers only chance realistically. Now, yeah, if these teams lose out, that's different. If the Pacers lose to the Cavs on Friday and lose to the Atlanta Hawks on Sunday and the Sixers win out, we would also be in the third seed, in the sixth seed that way too. But I think our best chances are the Orlando Magic to lose the last two out of the last three right here. We are one and a half behind. So yeah. They lose two in a they use they lose two out of the next three. And the Sixers sneak in the sixth seed that way. I think that's our best shot at getting out of the play in tournament. But if we're in the play in tournament, it is what it is. Bring me Miami. You know, at least if we have Miami won tonight, too, I'm pretty sure. Am I correct about that? Did Miami win? I think Miami won. Uh, but, yeah, if we're in a, you know, if we can't get the sixth seed and we got to stay in the, in the play-in tournament, at least, at least hold on to that seven seed and get home court advantage in the play-in game so that you can win that game against Miami and then uh, come out of the play-in tournament as the seventh seed in the East and take on that fraud Doc Rivers and the Milwaukee Bucks in the first round of the NBA playoffs. My God, the bro, the playoffs this season are about to be crazy. You can't write stories better than this, man. Fingers crossed the Bucks pull a win against the Magic. Come on, Glenn. It's up to you what you're going <laughs> to... Come on! It's all y'all! It's all y'all! What you want to do? It's all y'all! What y'all want to do? We're just going to keep playing and playing and playing and playing. And that's how we're going to win this game. Classic Doc Rivers uh, timeout huddle reference right there by Stephen Griffin. Thank you for that. Xander with the $20 super chat. I appreciate that, my friend. Thank you so much for the support outside of Boston. Who else can really beat us? This is the first time since 2001 we actually have a shot to make a deep run. Maxi, JoJo, Kelly, and the deepest cohesive bench we might have ever had. Bro, you're you're not wrong, man. You are not wrong. I don't know who. I don't know. I, I'm I'm seeing, realistically, a Philadelphia 76ers Eastern Conference Finals against the Boston Celtics. That's what I'm seeing, and that's not crazy to say right now because, like you said, who in the East besides Boston is a threat in a seven-game series? You know? I, Indiana, Cleveland, Orlando, New York without Julius Randle, although, mm, does Julius Randle really make or break New York? I'm not sure. Uh, 
I wouldn't want to play New York in a seven game series just because of how physical they are. And, you know, Tibbs is a, is a defensive minded coach and they're, you know, they, they, they would, they'd be bodying Joel out there. They would be out there. They got the block nest monster back, uh, uh, Robinson, you know, they would, they would be making it very difficult for Joel and be the New York Knicks would, and they play great perimeter defense. They fly out off of double teams. They rotate well. I don't like playing the New York Knicks. Uh, but yeah, Boston's the only team that's that's definitely like, you know, could we win that? I think we could win that too. But none of these other teams, I'm taking the Sixers against all these other teams. And against the Celtics. Tez29 with a $20 super check. Thank you, sir, for the super chat. You didn't you didn't put a comment. I don't know if you wanted me to read something there. I don't see you just dropped the 20 bucks, which I appreciate. Uh, thank you, Nicholas Kennedy, for subscribing to the channel. Welcome to Sicko Nation. It's a movement. We're taking over. Uh, Tez, if you had a comment you want me to read, I'll, I'll still look at the chat here, see if I see your name pop up again, and, and I'll... Uh, Peter says, PC repair fund. <laughs> hey, listen. He said today that the, the, the motherboard was supposed to be delivered today. So, you know, we'll see. I don't know. Uh, Nick Marchetti with the super chat. Thank you so much for the super chat, DJ. If we make the finals and face the Nuggets. Woo! If we make the finals and face the Denver Nuggets. I was just... uh. I was just texting uh, Swipe a Cam today. We were having a little conversation just about uh, integral podcasting, YouTube type of stuff, sponsorships, things like that. We like to share information. Me, RB, uh, Swipe a Cam is one of my guys. If we play, if we make the NBA Finals and play the Denver Nuggets, a watch along with Swipe a Cam. Just two fan bases that absolutely hate each other. <laughs> what do you guys think? Tez said, I, I tried. It kept glitching. Well, try again. Type it in the chat. What do you want me to... What, what was your question, bro? What was your comment, man? I want, I want to see it. Um, 74 you. I don't care who we play. We just need Miami and Boston to slug it out the first round. Yeah, that'd be a great first round, wouldn't it? Wouldn't that be a great first round? Um, Cat Magic, Cavs, Bucks are our best matchups. I agree with that. Uh, Giannis has a strained calf right now. I don't know if, if, uh, I don't know. I didn't hear anything else about it. Let's go over to maybe Twitter here, see what we can find maybe about Giannis. Uh, all I saw was strained calf. Uh, Giannis appeared to hurt his leg. Hope he is okay. People were typing prayers up for Giannis. Like, I mean, I, you know, there's lots of things I'll pray for. We don't need to pray for a guy with a with a calf cramp. You know what I'm saying? There's real problems in the world. But anyway, um, Giannis Antetokounmpo was down on the floor with no contact. He was headed up court. His teammates helped him off the floor. Yeah, there's not really... I'm not seeing any information, like, afterwards on Giannis. Uh, hope he's okay. Rejects Jalen Brown. Shout out to that. Uh, yeah, that's that's bad timing though. You know, uh, a calf cramp can be a lingering thing. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, hamstring stuff, calf cramps, things like that. That can be a lingering thing that lingers into the postseason, and that's bad, bad news for the Milwaukee Bucks. Not like they didn't already have, you know, things not going their way, like their coach. When you talking to Trill Bro Dude again on your pod? Oh, yeah, man. I got to bring him back, man. That's a good dude. That's a good dude. You know Ball Podcast. Uh, he's a busy guy. He does a lot of things. But he has to just shoot threes without hesitation. He has no layup package. <laughs> he shanked a couple of them this game, didn't he? He had a fast break one off of a nice steal, too. And he missed that one. Um... Let's see what we got as far as Sixers go. Sixers win six in a row. Six in a row. Uh, 76ers page. 
sharing highlights, post-game embrace between KJ and DeAnthony Melton. KJ Martin was out this game. I think he earned a little bit of rest with his defensive efforts in the last couple of games. So, you know, hopefully KJ is not actually injured and he comes back. Um, it felt good to just run around. Okay, here we go. Who's this? DeAnthony Melton. It felt good to just run around with my teammates and get some shots up and play some defense. Yeah. Tyrese Maxey interviewed him after the game. I don't want to play that because I got hit with copyright last time I played a media from the Sixers live on the show. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Joel Embiid's amazing. He's one of the best players I've ever watched with my own two eyes. It, it is what it is. He's ridiculous. He comes back from knee surgery, drops almost a 40-point triple-double. Nobody can stop him. He's the best in the world. He's the best player in the league every single year. He's healthy. I don't care what anybody says. He's an MVP. Obviously, Sixers are a championship contender with him, and they're a lottery team without him. Um, and yeah, I think that's all I got, man. Thank you all for coming through. Thanks for hanging out. I appreciate the super chats and we will be right back here post game live on Friday night. And, uh, is that the Orlando game Friday? Is that the Orlando game Friday? LeBron recovered pretty quickly from the mi- <laughs> Come on, Eric. <laughs> Have you realized we can get six seed if we beat Orlando and win out? Yes, sir. Well, we need Orlando to lose three. No, we need Orlando to lose two. So we need Orlando to lose to us and they play the Bucks twice. So we need Orlando to lose at least one of those. We need Atla- uh, We need Orlando. Now I can't talk. We need Orlando to lose at least one of those games against the Bucks, and we need to beat them. Uh, and we need to win out. We need to beat Orlando and Brooklyn. That shouldn't be a problem. Orlando, I don't know anything about. They, 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 they seem like a spoiler. They seem like a team that can ruin somebody's party. You know what I mean? Brooklyn, not so much. So, yeah, we need Orlando to lose uh, one to the Bucks, lose to us, and we need to win out for us to steal the sixth seed in Orlando. would go from almost the second seed all the way into the play-in tournament, which is crazy. Riaz with a twenty dollars super chat. Thank y'all for the super chats tonight, man. You treat me great. I appreciate it, DJ. Based on your comments on the Knicks, do we stay at seven and play the Bucks? Also, how do you see a Sixers Cavs first round matchup? Give me a prediction against the Cavs. Mobley is as soft as a marshmallow. Um. So, are you saying that if if we if we get up into the well, I don't feel like bringing it back up again. I'll look at it on here. If we get up into the uh, sixth seed, let's see, NBA standings. Are you saying that, yeah, if we get the sixth seed and New York stays in the third seed, um, we would then be playing the New York Knicks in the first round? And, and yeah, that's a great question, Riaz. Because I don't want to play the New York Knicks in the first round. I mean, I think we beat the Knicks in the first round but I think they beat us up a little bit in the first round. I would rather play the Bucks in the first round, but I also would rather avoid the play-in tournament altogether and end up in the sixth seed. Now, the Milwaukee Bucks are only one game ahead of the New York Knicks. The Bucks' remaining schedule is Orlando, Oklahoma City, and Orlando. We want Orlando to lose at least one of those to the Bucs. But if Orlando wins one of those and the Bucs lose to Oklahoma City, then the Bucs are the third seed, assuming that New York beats the Nets and the Bulls at the end of the season. So actually, if I had to make a prediction, with Giannis having calf cramps... I think I'm predicting the Knicks to be the second seed in the East and the Sixers to come out into the sixth seed and take on the Milwaukee Bucks in the first round as the three and the six. This is giving me a headache. Uh, Also, how do you see a Sixers versus Cavs first round matchup? Yeah, I'm not worried about the Cavs, man. I think the Cavs have a nice roster to win a lot of regular season games. But yeah, from the games that I've watched us match up against the Cavs this season, 
I don't fear them too much. Um, when we play really physical defense and we put, you know, KJ Martin and the boys on, uh, on, uh, it's late, man. Now I can't think of names, uh, the point guard, whatever. Um, yeah. And Mobley, none of them, none of them dudes can guard Joel and be not even close. You know, and we, we beat the Cavs, I think twice this season without Joel and correct me if I'm wrong. One of them was without Maxi. That might be wrong. But I'm pretty sure we beat the Cavs twice this year without Joel Embiid. With Joel Embiid, I don't think the Cavs have the 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 artillery to match up with us in a seven game series. You know, um, they might they might steal one. Uh, I would I would literally, and I'm not joking. I would predict a Cavs series with a healthy Joel Embiid to be a four to one victory. Gentlemen sweep. Yeah. Scared of the Knicks because because they're deep. They play very physical defense. They play great defense. They play great perimeter defense. They play great interior defense. They will throw everybody at Joel. They got Mitchell Robinson back. Uh, they got Hartenstein. They got uh, 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 another young buck off the bench. Um, they got a lot of big bodies. They're deep. They got DiVincenzo. They got Josh Hart. They got a lot of dudes that can make clutch shots and, and play defense and chase down loose balls. They can out hustle you. I just don't like playing the Knicks, man. It's a deep physical defensive team. I would rather the Milwaukee Bucks, but I don't think that Knicks beat us in the first round. I just think, I think it would get a little bit chippier. I think they would get two of them or maybe God forbid they would get hot and we would be cold a couple games and we would go seven in the first round. That would suck. But yeah, I don't want to play the Knicks, man. I don't want to play the Knicks, but now that I, now that I looked at it and I think, you know, the Bucks have a Giannis issue. I think the Bucks are going to fall to the third seed, and I think that's what's going to happen. Yeah, here's my take on that. Seventy Sixers versus Bucks first round NBA C dollar signs. I can see that as a strong possibility. Oh, dude, ESPN's foaming at the mouth after over something like that. You get to write those stories. You get to write Doc Rivers versus his former team in the first round. And uh, the Bucks are annoying. They give us fits when they're fully healthy. Of course, they got, you know, Giannis and Brooke Lopez, who turns into seven foot three Steph Curry against us. And uh, Chris Middleton's back. I'm sure he's just getting back into rhythm because he was injured a lot of this season. Well, we take the Bucks in a seven-game series. Facts, for sure. For sure. Billy, I like that, bro. We're good either way. We're upsetting anyone. I don't even think it's an upset. I think we're favored against most of these teams, honestly. If these betting sites catch up, like I said, you should have put your money on Joel's total stats uh, against Bet on BetUS tonight and the last couple of games because the betting sites haven't caught up yet. When these betting sites catch up to what's going on, we should be the favorite in these games, honestly. But that's just what I think. Hey, listen, man. I love you guys. Sicko Nation, Run It Back Nation. Thanks for hanging out with me. Thanks for being here. Please hit the like button one time if you haven't already. Y'all are the best, man. I love chopping it up. Love talking ball with you. Uh, we'll be right back here on Friday. That could be a big game, man. That could be a big game. Uh, we might do a stream, actually, the next two days. We got two days off. Me and RB might link up, so look out for that. Myself and RB might do a collab stream uh, in the next two days. Maybe me, maybe I'll get Romp to come out of his shell, come out of his wherever he's at. Um, so stay tuned, man. Follow the Instagram. We just hit 5,000 followers on the Instagram page today. Thank you for that. I'm out of here.